Founded in 1981, the Woodson Center empowers community-based leaders to promote solutions to reduce crime and violence, restore families, revitalize underserved communities, and assist in the creation of economic enterprise. Founder Bob Woodson led with the radical idea that every single person can be a source of innovation and positive change, regardless of income or zip code. Tonight, you'll hear some inspiring stories that have transformed lives and communities across America. If you want to know why the Woodson Center is committed to upward mobility and neighborhood enterprise, then you have to understand what my father observed in the early days of the civil rights movement. At just 25 years old, he had become a vice president of his local NAACP chapter and chairman of the Human Relations Council. Yet he found himself disagreeing with some of the older leaders from these movements. He called it the elitism of black leadership and wrote, those in established circles of leadership did not credit low-income people with having the ability to understand the needs of their own community. More and more, he saw that these leaders rarely asked for the ideas and input of less educated, lower-income Blacks whose suffering was the greatest. For the most part, the only time they were called upon was to provide bodies for a demonstration. Segregation in housing was really an important issue at the time. White landlords refused to rent apartments to blacks. So after some negotiation was not successful, we organized a demonstration. We took a busload of people and picketed outside of the head of the Westchester Board of Realtors home on a Sunday afternoon. Well, that got their attention. And after a while, we saw a change in their practices. The same with the issue of segregation. Westchester had the segregated school system. And, and also the system was, didn't play the same amount of money were spent on low-income black neighborhood schools. And so we met with the chairman of the school board who said, oh, I, we don't believe that Woodson and his small band of radicals represent the Westchester black community. We know our people. So we took his statement, we know our people, and put it on picket signs, and we organized over a thousand protesters who stood silently on the steps of the courthouse in Westchester. And then finally, after that protest, they conceded, they hired a black principal, and also they moved to desegregate the schools. As the dawn of a new decade drew near, Bob Woodson's approach of listening to the leaders of lower income communities didn't change. It deepened and matured to meet new opportunities and challenges. In the early 70s in Philadelphia, it was the youth gang capital of the country at 48 gang deaths a year. They listed it right next to the Vietnam deaths. Well, an enterprising couple, David and Falaka Fatah, found that the oldest of their six sons was a gang member. She invited him to bring his 15 friends home. They moved into their house, and as a result, word circulated that there was sanctuary. The young man retired her mortgage in a few years and purchased five other houses on that neighborhood, and they had 100 young men from all over the city living peacefully. They expanded to the entire city, and as a consequence, youth gang violence went down from 48 in uh, 1974 down to two a year. The Woodson Center Public Housing Pilot changed the world of welfare policies related to low-income residents, showing as they trained in 12 sites across the country that residents could be their own owners and managers such as Kimmy Gray here in the District of Columbia at Kenilworth Parkside. They had already sent over 600 young people to colleges, took over management of the property, becoming their own maintenance men and renovators and managers, and according to an independent accounting firm, saved taxpayers millions of dollars 
increase rental collections 77 percent and cut crime and welfare dependency in half. Congress took note. With the help of the Center, amendments were crafted to the Housing Act in 1987, sponsored by Jack Kemp, Walter Fontroy, Republican and Democrat, that passed 419 to 1, giving residents the right to manage and own their own housing and reinvest surplus revenues in their own community enterprises. As the decade closed, it was clear that the nation needed a new approach to curb the violence in so many communities of color across the country. That approach would soon become codified in three simple words, violence-free zones. Uh, Bennett Terrace was considered to be one of the most dangerous places in the District of Columbia. It was a war zone where the kids was killing each other for little or nothing. Life didn't mean a thing in Ben and Terrace. We went into Ben and Terrace and began the transformation. The Woodson Center came in with us and began to navigate the roadmap, began to create concepts that we could utilize to be able to obtain our end results, which was transformation of the community building the community, lifting the community. And from that particular point, life was blown into the balanced free zone, which became an initiative of transformation for the community, public health for the community, public safety for the community, uplifting transformation in regards to people, jobs, opportunity, training for the people. The Neighborhood Leadership Development Institute uh, is a program that initially trained 320 community-based organizations located in roughly 22 states and we would provide them with 16 days of concentrated training in organizational development, community development, resource development, and partnership development. As a result of the community-based leaders participation in the Neighborhood Leadership Development Institute, uh, at least 30% of them have gone on and grown their business, grown their nonprofit organizations to a sustainable level. The genesis of the Achievement Against the Odds Awards, I think Bob Woodson was troubled by what he saw of people who were being celebrated for being movie stars or politicians, and he felt that the real heroes of our society are really in low-income neighborhoods who 24 hours a day are living with terrible problems but who step up and are trying to find solutions. And so he set up a program to bring them to Washington to what he called low-income Oscars night, not only to reward them but and show that they were models for the whole country, but also to help uh, make them seen in their own communities and hopefully that their own cities would then support them uh, with the things that they needed to do their programs. the dawn of the 21st century, the Woodson Center had pioneered new ways to effectively support neighborhood transformation for the people who needed it most. The county, the county itself was not only, is not only a poverty stricken county, it's a rural county, it's located between Selma and Montgomery, it has a rich civil rights history, uh, and the county has a, uh, has, has a, a history of local people being involved and engaged with people like Mr. Woodson who came from the outside to help us find solutions together. The result of Mr. Woodson teaching me about economic development, at that particular time we were able to put together a comprehensive economic development plan for Lowndes County which had not been done for a very long time prior to then. 
uh, we also were able to enlighten other people about the issues that were happening there and a number of uh, politicians at that time came to visit as well as people from various corporations. We were able to put together the forerunner for my organization, the Alabama Center for Rural Enterprise, which was the part of the Alabama Rural Initiative. And that was the beginning of me stepping out and doing the work that I'm doing now. The Hands Across initiative that the Woodson Center launched in Washington, D.C. consisted of over 50 organizations. These organizations were in need of uh, capacity building and technical assistance uh, services. The Woodson Center understood that these organizations needed financial management, uh, they needed program evaluation, and they needed board development. It was more important not just to tell them what they needed to do, but to show them what they needed to do. In the next decade, the Woodson Center adapted again to meet the challenges facing the nation's most vulnerable communities, placing it in the crosshairs of controversy. Hurricane Harvey ravaged the Houston area late August of 2017. So the, the Woodson Center and Texas Public Policy Foundation, we partnered together to bring relief to the, the community of Houston. Some of these people have lost everything. So we, we worked with them and over the, a few week period, um, we were able to get um, a, a hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of supplies out to folks um, and, and help thousands of people. And it was, it was a wonderful experience. Not something typical in the policy world that we get to do and actually like work with people on the, on the street level, which is great. Seventeen Seventy Six Unites was an effort undertaken by the Woodson Center to respond to the 1619 project by the New York Times that defined America as incurably racist. Well, we published a series of essays by scholars and activists to refute their notions that America is racist by providing inspirational and aspirational accurate accounts of how blacks achieved against the odds even under slavery and discrimination. The Voices of Black Mothers United is an initiative of the Woodson Center. Uh, we are mothers who've lost children to violence in our communities, and we needed a voice. And Mr. Woodson of the Woodson Center has given us that voice to go out and advocate, to help other mothers heal, to help communities heal, to do community intervention to bring about safer communities and, and do activities to bring law enforcement together with the community and promoting positive policing. Woodson Center has been a catalyst for upward mobility and neighborhood enterprise for 40 years, but it is just getting started. There is so much more to come. The Woodson Center has been at the forefront of facing, helping the country face many challenges over this four decades. We have mobilized grassroots leaders. We've pushed against those who would denigrate our country, those who would defame our values. We've brought together low-income people, upper-income folks, black, white, brown, red. We all came together united in support of this nation's values, and we hope you will continue to support us and come join us in our journey into the future.